What makes a summit steward is really someone who is very passionate about protecting the outdoors, protecting really the, our beautiful mountain landscape and the really fragile and rare alpine plants that grow on our summits. It is someone who is willing to deal with the harsh conditions, and speak with hundreds of people every day and then still keep that smile on their face. The Adirondack High Peak Summer Stewardship Program's mission is to protect New York's alpine habitat through education, trail work, and research. Here in New York State, we have 173 acres of alpine habitat spread across 21 Adirondack summits. Summit stewards visit the top of the summits every single day for Mount Marcy and Algonquin Peak in the summer. We also do Bright Peak five days a week in Cascade on the weekends and Colden every other week for a couple days. Those are the main summits that summit stewards are on, but we also visit all of the peaks that have alpine vegetation at least once during the season. Summit stewards have spoken to over half a million hikers since the beginning of the program in 1989. And that has happened one conversation at a time with over a hundred summit stewards. Um, through rain and sleet and hail and snow, um, talking to hikers from May to October. We are up there to um, connect people to this beautiful Adirondack landscape, connecting people to place so they will love this area enough to want to protect the really special fragile alpine plants that we have on our summits. The Summit Stewardship Program was the brainchild of Dr. Ketchlidge and Kathy Regan in 1989. Kathy was the Director of Science for the Nature Conservancy, teamed up with Peter Zika. They had both been at the University of Vermont together, um, where there was a program called the Ranger Natural Naturalist Program, and that inspired the Summit Stewardship Program here in the Adirondacks. My first hike to a high peak was with Ketch. Um, when I was at the New York State Ranger School at Wanakina, and he hiked the Algonquin two days in a row with half the class in each group to go up and, and try and protect the alpine vegetation by planting grass seed, fertilizing, and liming the soils that were bare. And, and he found through his work that when those grasses took, took hold, they would hold the soil in place until natural vegetation came back in. In 1989, I started a new job at the Nature Conservancy up in the Adirondack Chapter. And as I was learning about the Adirondack Chapter and what the Nature Conservancy was involved with, I realized how important the alpine vegetation was. Now, TNC works at protecting rare species and high quality natural communities. The rare species in New York State and the highest quality rare communities were the alpine vegetation. So we started looking into it and we kept finding out that people would come to us and say, you don't need a program there, the, the species are already protected, it's in forest preserve, it's forever wild, they're protected. Like, well, that doesn't really mean it's protected, that means you've got part of it protected in acquisition, that's great, but that's not enough. The whole first Earth Day in 1970, that whole return to the, to the land movement, the backpacking boom, was something that I experienced. I watched that happen and we had routinely people camping right on the summits, right in the alpine vegetation because folks just didn't know any better. And Ketch, I think, was the guy who pushed for some effort to protect the resource. So we started educating um, our supervisors and started putting together this idea of creating a program. One of our board members was Dr. Ketchledge, and then I learned that Ketch had been trying to do this forever. Peter and I worked at trying a game plan to approach TNC, my boss, Tim Barnett, and the board, and said, you know, these plants aren't protected because there needs to be some additional work done. And we put together our outline and our proposal, and it all came together rather quickly. We didn't have much time to advertise for the first year. Um, DEC handed us over the applications for their summer ranger program um, assistant rangers that weren't accepted into the program. We contacted a couple of people from that 
pile and brought some people in for interviews and we hired our first two stewards. We winged it. We tried training, we did what we could. We had Peter Fish available for helping us in the back country. We had, um, we brought in whoever we thought would be needed, including Peter Zika for the plants and being able to give educational material out and, and teach them. We switched between Algonquin and Marcy so that they wouldn't be on the same mountain all the time. So they just switched back and forth. The idea was Algonquin and Marcy were a lot of the first timers um, mountains, that they would go up there, they would meet a steward, and they would learn a new ethic. It's all about meeting, greeting, educating, um, informing, chatting with the hiking public in ways that are, are uh, more meaningful often than an enforcement kind of presence would be. They are trusted as being the ecologists, as being the botanists, as being the people that really know how to protect the summits. We made it very, very clear that this was an educational program and not a um, enforcement program. We wanted to be the public's friends. We also made it really clear to our employees that they were not to make people feel bad on that visit if they were in fact trampling the vegetation. It's not intuitive. You go on a golf course and you're walking on the grass. How do you know that you're not supposed to do that on an alpine summit? It's not intuitive. So let's teach them, teach them the ethic, have them go out for the next time, and have them teach other people. This also opens the door to have a larger discussion about how important it is to protect the places that we love and their role in doing so. And then hopefully they'll take those messages home and think about what actions they can take in their lives to make a difference. I think that is a significant opportunity um, and advantage of the Summit Stewardship Program. And education is one of the most high leverage, cost-effective tools that we can use. And particularly, as I said, to meet people on their own terms um, when they're doing things that they love, you're much more likely to make a difference in their lives. Some of stewards hope to instill a wilderness ethic and that is done first, mo first and foremost with asking hikers to do the rock walk when they are above tree line to protect fragile plants. But this also expands with our conversations with hikers, whether it be explaining the whys of regulations or um, teaching hikers about leave no trace outdoor skills and ethics, um, how to go to the bathroom responsibly in the backcountry or use a bear can. Um, and really this happens one conversation at a time. Um, and we're hoping to that sharing these, this knowledge expands to not just protecting the alpine zone, but also protecting all of our public lands. So one of the reasons I realized that the program was working in addition to seeing the vegetation recover was uh, happened one day when I was up on top of Gothics doing biological monitoring and I was monitoring for a population of a really rare species. I'm out in the meadow and I had people come up to me and tell me that I shouldn't be out there. <laughs> and I had to explain to them that I understood that but uh, that I had a real reason to be there. But it, was, it, it made me feel good because obviously the ethic had changed. I didn't think I'd see recovery in my lifetime. Short growing season, harsh environment, I thought I was doing this for the future. I was happy and tickled that I got to see the results so early. It's really important to know that it's not just the summit stewards who are stewards of this area, it is every single person who recreates here in the high peaks and comes up above tree line and decides to stay on those durable rock surfaces. They are they are also heroes as well, and we appreciate all of the people who come to enjoy these beautiful areas and decide to protect the alpine plants by doing the rock walk. When looking towards the future, there are multiple issues impacting the Adirondack Park, whether that be climate change or high use. Really, the Adirondack High Peak Summit Stewardship Program acts as a beacon of hope and a guiding light for future decision-making in the park.